everyone. I really hope that you have been enjoying your Saturday. And we're going to be looking at what is happening across the Atlantic. But I want to bring your attention to the models because they are definitely starting to show some signs of potential development. I give that an extremely low chance just because of the time of year and uh, the fact that uh, the conditions are typically most unfavorable within this period here. But could there be some sort of anomaly and we actually have a conducive environment even to favor brief development in the Atlantic? So we're going to be taking a look at what is happening, what the models are forecasting. But as of right now, we can definitely see that there isn't much going on across the Atlantic. We've got that frontal system making its way across the uh, the area moving toward the east. And uh, it is that frontal system, the tail end of it, that models have been showing actually loitering around a bit and uh, somewhat of an increase in moisture well offshore the northeastern Caribbean. And we also see a bit of activity near the Cabo Verde Islands, but nothing much across the Caribbean on a whole. However, there is that increase in Saharan dust coverage. So if you're in the Lesser Antilles, you may notice that it is hazy. It's because of all that dust, which is making its way across the Atlantic. We'll talk about that momentarily. But zooming into the region here, we can see uh, some patches of clouds here and there, uh, especially over in the eastern and central parishes of Jamaica. Some areas may have had some passing showers at times. Again, that frontal system is making its way out. You can see a bit of activity moving across parts of the Bahamas. But elsewhere, there isn't anything much happening this evening. As I mentioned, though, let's go on to that Saharan earlier coverage. So this was the forecast for 5 p.m., today and there we can see some of those darker shades of brown indicating a higher concentration of dust so some of that thicker dust is expected to be just offshore the lesser antilles barbados and the other islands but then as we're going to be heading into tomorrow morning we see this dust entering and it's forecast to blanket all of the lesser antilles so uh this dust has its uh, health effects in terms of the skin and eye irritation. It may also trigger uh, breathing difficulty in some persons, especially individuals with uh, conditions such as asthma, like myself. But we see that this dust coverage is pretty much across the entire main development region of the Atlantic from the coast going all the way toward the Americas. As we're going to be heading into Monday, we see it moving even more into the Caribbean region areas such as the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, again, Northern South America, Northeast South America, Venezuela, and the Guyanas as well. But eventually, as we head into Tuesday, there may, uh, there may be somewhat of a break in all this dust for parts of the Lesser Antilles, but uh, some of it is expected to reach a bit further toward the West, potentially reaching areas such as Panama. But of course, I'll continue to keep you guys posted on it. In terms of the rainfall forecast for the rest of today, here we are seeing it uh, going into tonight, and we're not seeing all of this very colorful shading across the Caribbean, these reds and these burgundies, purples. So, no significant rainfall is expected between now and uh, later tonight. But there may be some additional showers in parts of the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, even parts of eastern Jamaica as well, and some spots in the Bahamas over toward most of Central America. We can see that pretty dry and quiet over there. Nothing much expected. Few showers possible for parts of Costa Rica, Panama, down into Colombia, and even the Guyanas as well. So there are a couple of thunderstorms which are developing nearby, but uh, that rainfall activity is unlikely to be for the majority of the area. And then other areas such as uh, the Cayman Islands, the islands offshore, Central America, San Andreas, Providencia, the Bay Islands, the Keys, offshore Belize, uh, the ABC Islands, and much of the Windward Islands not expected to experience much as it relates to any significant rainfall or even any downpour at all as we head throughout the rest of today. So it's been a bit windy in the South Caribbean as well. This is as we head into tonight. So uh, some of the winds in the South Caribbean could be up to 15, 20 knots and uh, also quite breezy in the Bahamas with that frontal system making its way out elsewhere should be pretty much tranquil for the most part. Now, as it relates to what the models are showing, we're going to be kickstarting things with the Euro model. And it has been quite consistent about that potential system uh, to the well offshore, the Caribbean, uh, to the northeast of the islands. We can see that increase in moisture. So the, uh, the green and the yellow, orange, red shadings indicate the average precipitation rate. So we can see that low pressure system off to the east of Bermuda. And Euro has been showing it for quite some time, not showing anything too defined, 
But uh, with the above average temperatures, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see even brief subtropical de uh, development out there as long as conditions are favorable enough to actually allow that to happen. However, it is also showing another feature as we're going to be heading into early March. So this is not for this coming Monday, but rather the following Monday on the 4th of March, we can see this other low pressure system, a lot of moisture moving across parts of the Gulf, the Southeast taste and the offshore of the U.S. And this is actually a typical origin spot in the month of June where we would have these systems offshore of the U.S. and even in the Gulf as well. And if you, you have been watching my previous videos, I mentioned quite a number of times that the current sea surface temperatures out there are what we would see around June going to July. And here we have the Euro model now showing this little area here looking quite interesting. But of course, this is no guarantee that we will see any development there. Only time is going to tell because there are bound to be changes with these models. The Canadian model is also showing that increase in moisture offshore the southeast US but doesn't show anything significant. As relates to the ICON model and uh, the tail end of the current frontal system actually trying to develop into something, it's not showing much. And uh, the GFS is only showing that increase in all that moisture, not showing anything significant either. But that is solely for next week. The following week though, GFS is definitely being aggressive on what we could see happen. So this is for Thursday the 7th of March and there we're seeing quite the increase in rainfall activity in the vicinity of the eastern caribbean and south america as well and out of that gfs is showing an air of low pressure forming potentially a tropical cyclone developing around that time and do i think that is possible yes i think it is possible but do i give it a good chance of happening as of right now definitely not as I said, it all depends on whether or not conditions are going to be conducive to allow that to happen. And the wind shear is something that is constantly changing and when it is very strong, it definitely prevents development from taking place. And also, the waters are pretty much substantial because at the minimum, tropical cyclones would require around 26 degrees Celsius. We're looking at the sea surface temperature map and the sea surface temperatures are above average and they are 26 degrees or more within the vicinity of the Caribbean. We see 26, 27, 28 and it is only going to get warmer as we approach spring and summer as well. So the sea surface temperatures are definitely favorable as I mentioned above average. Here's the anomaly map and we can see these orange shadings indicating above average temperatures. So it is a pretty interesting scenario and GFS has been all over the place with these potential systems forming and that is something that is certainly foreign for this time of year because usually the model would be a bit aggressive and uh, having these systems popping up as we head into May and June, even into July as well. So seeing that at this time of year is definitely something unusual. As I said, it is not impossible, but we'll see what the trend is. Again, these are the names for the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season and first on the list is Alberto. So we'll see if the season will be off to an early start, although I have very high confidence in that happening because of how warm those waters are. So I do think that we will see preseason development and if the year is determined, we could even see multiple systems before the start, the official start of the hurricane season. But I'll be keeping you guys posted as always. And that is it for this video. I hope you found it to be very informative. And if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I can and remember to always be weatherwise.